Hi, good day. My name is Renee and I'm the owner of License to Scale. Thank you for enrolling with License to Scale in order to complete your full qualification in short-term insurance in the easiest way. Of course, this is only available to people with more than five years experience in short-term insurance. And the basis of the RPL assessment is obviously in order for us to do a one-self assessment against what it is that you already know and can do in the industry. So let's start off with looking at what is RPL. RPL is recognition of prior learning, which as I just said means that I take everything that you can do and everything that you know and that knowledge may have been um, learned formally or informally so formally would mean maybe you've completed some credits through another training provider or possibly you have completed some skills programs um, or part qualifications with another training provider or you have just been thrown into the deep end and you just had to learn the job you know trying not to drown, which is how the majority of us learned how to do short-term insurance in our industry. And my job is in order to take what it is that you know and what you already can do and to assess that against the formal outcomes of the qualification on short-term insurance. So what we will assess is basically all the outcomes of all the unit standards, all the core, all the fundamentals, all of the elective unit standards, as well as the exit level outcomes of the qualification, its associated assessment criteria, and also the CCFOs, which is the critical cross-field outcomes. You don't have to worry too much about all those big words. It's my job to ensure that your evidence that I get from you is sufficient and valid and authentic and um, current in order for me to do that. Okay, so let's look at the RPL process. Now, any assessment process that we do in terms of SACWA should contain a formative assessment and a summative assessment. A formative assessment is during the process of learning. So this is where you are still busy learning. And if you, for instance, enrolled with me on a long distance full qualification, what I would have done is sent you the material and every single unit standard, you would have studied it, completed the relevant worksheets, completed the mock exams and the summative assessment. And up to the summative assessment, that entire process is the formative assessment. But now in your case, being an RPL candidate, I know that this formative assessment, as I previously stated, has happened over many years, over 5, 10, 100 years. Some of you feel like you've been working in insurance for 100 years. And, um, and it is my job in order to see what it is that you know and can do as I said, in order to give you those qualifications. But I do need to give something to NCETA because we don't do on-the-job assessments anymore. So you do need to complete a very short and simple and quick portfolio of evidence, which I've sent to you, which we're going to look at in a few minutes. And after you've completed that formative assessment and you have submitted it to the Offices of License to Scale, I will then send you a mock exam, which is part of the formative assessment, which I call a final formative assessment. Now, the purpose of this final formative assessment or mock exam is twofold. Number one, it is so that you can assess your own knowledge and so that you can identify any gaps that might exist that you need to fill before we write that summative assessment. And during while you are completing the mock exam, if you struggle with something specifically, you can then come back to me and say, Renee, please, can you help me with material on SASRI or ethics of phase, financial literacy, whatever the case may be. And I will be more than happy to help you with that. The other reason why we do the mock exam is so that I can ascertain that you are in fact competent and that you are ready to undergo the final summative assessment in order to award you with the full qualifications, that you do indeed meet all the criteria that I need in order for you to get this full qualification. All right, after the mock exam, we will assess it. We will send it to you so that you can see where you made your errors, if any, and then you'll be writing the final summative assessment with us. This needs to be a closed book summative assessment. You may use no resources whatsoever in order to complete the summative assessment. You may, however, use a pen and a calculator. Okay, now in future, what is going to happen and at time of making this video, this is November 2018. So more or less in a year's time, around about November 2019, INCITA should be bringing in an external assessment. Any person, regardless of how they complete this qualification by means of a learnership or a long distance full qualification or an RPL or whatever the case may be, once they are ready to receive the certificate, 
Before you will receive the certificate, you would have to undergo an external summative assessment within CETA. At this point, the process ends after the summative assessment with me, which is uh, one more reason why you should not delay and complete this qualification as soon as possible. All right, now I've sent you three documents. I've sent you a concession form. I've sent you a guideline on how to complete the portfolio, which is a step-by-step -step process that you can use in order to see what you need to do on every single page within the template that I sent you. And the third document, of course, would be the RPL template that you need to complete. Okay, now before I continue, I just need to get a little bit technical with you for a few minutes. This qualification consists of three parts, core, fundamentals and electives. And these credits are made up in such a way that it then meets the rules of combination of this qualification in order to give you a full qualification. Now, a lot of people come to me and say, oh, Renee, I just need 20 or 30 credits in order to complete the full qualification because I already have 130 or 90 or whatever the case may be. But upon close inspection, once I perform my audit, I will then see that the majority of those unit standards in some cases belong to the elective component, which means that that person, even though they have 90 credits, does not just need 60 credits in order to complete a full qualification. They still need all the core and they still need all of the fundamental. Let me explain that to you in a little bit more detail. So the core component consists of 51 credits. All 51 credits need to be completed. It is compulsory in order to do all of them. So the core unit standards consist of the media research assignment, which is part of this portfolio, law of contract, ethics, motor vehicle insurance, and so on. But all of them needs to be completed. The second part of this qualification would be the fundamental component. Now, that consists of 68 credits, and some of the 68 credits you might have already achieved if you have passed matric successfully. If you past some of your, um, sorry, your languages, you would receive 40 credits for that and 60 credits for maths. And I'm going to get to that in a little moment. And then, of course, the other part of the fundamentals would be 12 credits for financial literacy, which everybody needs to complete. There are no more concessions available for financial literacy. In the past, you used to get the 12 credits if you passed either accounting or um, business economics or economics in matric, but that no longer applies to in CETA. And then, of course, the last part of the qualification would be the electives. Now, the electives, we need 31 credits. And if you add the 51 and the 68 and the 31, you should get 150 credits. And what I've done is I have differentiated between personal lines electives and commercial line electives. So depending which class of business it is that you deal with, I will then either assess you against personal lines or commercial lines. And if you work with both, I would most probably assess you against commercial lines. But it also depends what it is that you have already achieved. Because if you've already achieved your electives, I will not assess you against them at all. I will only assess you against the balance of the qualification that you still require in order to get your certificate. Okay. Now, the concession form, and I'm going to show you what the concession form looks like in a few minutes. So the concession form, as I said earlier, is the document that you need to complete in order for INCETA to award you the fundamental unit standards that you qualify to get based on your metric certificate. And as I briefly indicated a few minutes ago, you will receive 20 credits on NQF Level 4 and another 20 credits on NQF Level 3, which is part of the communication unit standards, if you passed English and another official South African language with a minimum symbol of an F. Previously, it used to be an E on either higher or standard grade, but in CETA's now aligned their policies with those of SACWA, and therefore, if you achieved a minimum of 33.3% in matric for either languages, you will receive those credits, the respective credits. And the same goes for maths. If you passed maths or maths literacy with a minimum symbol of an F, which is 33.3%, then you will also receive the 12 credits which is associated with the mathematical numeracy part of this qualification. And as I mentioned, the financial literacy concession does not apply anymore. All right. 
Then I have sent you an RPL template and again I'm going to show you what that looks like and what you need to do in a few minutes. But just overall what this process entails is I just need you to complete the entire RPL template for me. You must also insert all of your personal documents into it where I ask you for them. You must complete the media research assignment which is part of this RPL template and then lastly I ask that you insert naturally occurring workplace evidence of documents that you use every single day to show me how it is that you work and interrelate with clients and short-term insurance and the, the underwriting that you do or the claims that you do. I ask that you only submit authentic evidence, in other words only your own. Please do not submit generic documents like the Phase Act, I know what it looks like, um, policy weddings, unless you actually did design the policy wording, which like a lot of my clients actually did, then you can insert it. Don't put in generic templates that your boss or your colleague designed, that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is your evidence um, that you did on the job, examples of that. And of course, in order to protect you in terms of poppy, I uh, ask that you just delete all of your clients' confidential information on there. I don't want to get into trouble and I don't want to get you into trouble because you gave me your clients' details. Okay. Now, the media research assignment, and I'm going to practically show you how you are going to complete this again in a few minutes. Just bear with me. I'm just giving you the overall um, picture here. The media research assignment entails that you need to obtain 15 media articles. Um, and the easiest, obviously, is just the internet, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. And those media articles must cover five topics as stipulated in the unit standards. And those five topics are technology and technological developments that could impact short-term insurance, any innovations in crime and accident prevention, climate change, disasters, and socio-economic developments in short-term insurance. Um, brilliant examples of that would be when South Africa's economy was reduced to junk status. Another example is hashtag fees must fall campaign and um, or how unemployment affects short-term insurance and there are many other examples. Okay, let's get out of this template quickly and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through to the RPL portfolio template. All right, now this is the document that I need you to complete and submit when you um, submit after the six weeks or however much time I gave you in order to complete it. And as you will see, it is just a blank template that you are going to complete all your forms. When you received your portfolio, when your portfolio is due, your personal information, whether you have any special requirements, and I need you to complete, um, read the checklist, and if you agree, I need you to say yes or no um, next to all of these aspects that I have given you. Two of the important things that you need to take note of, and this all is part of the guideline document that I have sent you. The first one is the appeals process. Um, no one has ever appealed because they've never had any reason to appeal, but should you feel the reason to appeal a decision that the assessor makes or that I as the moderator make, you are welcome to do so. The process is in there and you will obtain a form from me and we will relook at the decisions that they made. And if you're still not happy and I still not agree with you, we will escalate this to in situ and we will stand by their decision. And very important is plagiarism. Now, I feel that it is not really my responsibility to explain to you that working in the financial services industry as part of, as part of the phase fit and proper requirements means that you need to have honesty and integrity. And therefore, as I say, I feel that it is not even my place to say to you, but I have to say it, that if you commit plagiarism, if you copy another person's work or stuff from the internet and you act as if this is your own or you commit plagiarism on your mock exam and then of course most certainly on your summative assessment you please need to understand that if we are lucky enough to catch you out and we we are very good at catching you out I want you to become a detective I love law and order and um, and I watch law and order religiously so when I catch you out not if I catch you out when I catch you out 
unfortunately do need to report you to your employer. I need to report you to INCITA and INCITA will report you to the FSCA and I think you understand that this will mean that you could be debarred as a representative and that you might not be able to work in the financial services industry again, which really is not worth the risk of just copying and pasting something from the internet or from someone else's file or whatever the case may be. So please do not commit plagiarism. Please don't get me into my detective mode. Um, I much prefer just to be in normal Renee mode and find you competent based on your own rich and vast experience and knowledge that you have already gained in the industry. Okay, <clears throat> so you are going to say yes, 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 preferably, or no, if not applicable. Um, now, under Workplace Curriculum Vitae, what I ask you to do there is please to insert your learner registration form. Yes, I know you've already sent it to me, but it's just so amazing when I have all of your information in one spot, especially when INCITA comes and they want to look at it, and I don't have to go and look into my email archives in order to get it. I also ask for a certified copy of your ID. This must be certified by a Commissioner of Oaths, not by yourself, by another Commissioner of Oaths. And um, it must please have been certified in the last three months. And that copy which they certified with the original stamp and signature on, that is the one that I want, please. I also need a copy of your marriage and divorce certificate if your surname is different on your ID than what it is on your matric certificate. And if it is not because of marriage or divorce and just because you went and changed your name, I obviously need the respective proof from Home Affairs and affidavits to prove that as well, please. Okay, then I want a certified copy of your matric, matric certificate, same story, originally certified. The INCITA concession form, which I'm going to show you in a minute, needs to be inserted over here. And then I please want a very updated and comprehensive copy of your CV. But a lot of you don't have that because you either work for yourself and you've had no reason to do it, or um, it's not very up to date, or whatever the case may be. And therefore, if it's not up to date, then I obviously need you to complete the education and the training courses attended and your work history over here. But if your CV is extremely detailed and updated over these parts, you can just say refer to CV. All right, that brings us to section C and what you need to do here is another important aspect that you need to please initial for me. Um, hopefully you will agree and initial with those ones. Then there is a declaration that you need to sign. Somebody needs to co-sign this with you and a certificate of an RPL candidate which again needs to be co-signed by a supervisor or manager or another appropriate person. All right, that brings us to the media research assignment. And yeah, you will find the five topics which I have told you in the PowerPoint presentation, what it is that you need to research on. And we're going to get to that in another few minutes or seconds. I don't know, it depends. Um, and then lastly, what you're going to do is insert those amazing examples of your naturally occurring workplace evidence for me, please. Okay, let me show you the concession form. All right, so this is, let me just go to the previous page, there we go. This is the concession form that I've also sent you and all that I need you to do from here is complete your personal information, your name and telephone number, ID, email address, date applied for concession can just be that date that you complete the form, that's fine excuse me, and you need to sign it. And the qualification upon which you will be assessed against will be the short-term insurance qualification, and you can leave it like that. What we will then do is, if you had maths, we will then tick these through maths unit standards over here. And if you had another South African language that you passed, or if English was your secondary language, then we are going to click these four unit standards over here and lastly if you had English um, as your first language over here or your first language then we are going to tick these four unit standards over here we are going to say that yes you have an ID and a matric certificate and a divorce or marriage certificate if applicable the assessor will sign it and then in CETA will sign it alrighty so let's move on to the media research assignment <clears throat> So what I've said, excuse me, 
what I said what you guys need to do is to obtain 15 media articles so you basically have a choice to either go into um, websites that already where you know will be articles and for instance my first choice here is Risk Africa magazine I just love them and um, if you go over to where are we now sorry about that under topics over here you will see that you can then choose between medical long term and if we go to short term insurance under the topics then you will find various um, articles that you can then choose over there and it goes on all of the pages 16 pages of articles the same goes for insurance gateway now under insurance gateway you can choose as a consumer or as a professional and just as an example if you go in under professional under short term once again it will bring up all of these different um, types of media articles that they have, all the different subjects that they have. And you will see there are brokers and um, actuaries and assessors and loss adjusters and compliance and consumer protection. And when you go into them, then obviously there will be a lot of articles that you can use. And another example will be FIA as an example. Sorry, my internet is a little bit slow because I'm busy uploading another video onto YouTube. So I don't know how fast this is going to be. I didn't think this through before I started uploading, did I? So if you're on FIA's website, again, you will see there is a tab over there that says articles. And there will be many articles. And it will also say they like this is by One Life Insurance and this one is from AIG and so on. All right. But the other alternative is for you to, as an example, say media article, short term insurance. Whoops. Come on. Um, and let's say South Africa so that we bring it close to home. And let's say, for instance, innovations. Oops. Innovations in crime. Not cream, crime, but I'm sure Google is going to know that is what I meant exactly. And then you will see, oh, yes, King Price and Suntime and some money marketing and crime stats leave wallets lighter. That poses headaches for short term insurance industry. The impact on crime of crime on short term insurance. Technology is changing short term insurance. And so the list continues. And then I can put in um, natural disasters. And I can hit enter. And then again, short term insurance after the floods, disasters will impact insurance costs. Global warming, insurance are feeling the heat. And then if you see a heading that takes your fancy, obviously just click on it, go into the article, read through the article, see if this is the kind of article that you would like to use, copy and paste this article, and I obviously ask that you reference it, so you're then just going to highlight this entire heading over here, and copy it, and then paste it, let's so say for instance you're using a Word document, paste the reference for me, say that this is today's date, the 11th of November 2018, the time, what is the time, 16 minutes past 4 in the afternoon, and you are then going to reference your article, say where you got it from, the date and time that you downloaded it, and then the process of then analyzing this article and what you need to do with it, and I'm just quickly going to go back to my media research assignment and take you through these steps. So what I want you to do over here is to analyze at least 15 articles, all right? Predict and anticipate the effect that it could have on short-term insurance, and predict or anticipate what the effect could be on you. And then I've given you some pointers in the guideline document to say it must more or less be a page, more or less 500 words. If you're typing it, use an aerial size 12 font. And the only reason why I'm getting so technical, and you don't have to do aerial, you can use anything, but the only reason why I'm getting so technical is obviously I have had some very smarty pants clients or learners 
that um, would give me a full page but it would be in a size 72 font or 48 and there would literally be like two sentences on the page so I would ideally like at least one full page and I'm going to give you another example of an article that somebody completed over here let's make this a full screen if we can whoops there we go Alright, so what this learner has done is, let me just see, they didn't reference it nicely over here, but what they did is they inserted the media article behind it, but ideally I would like for you to reference the date and time that you downloaded it and the website that you got it from. And what they've done is they've just said what the current events are, what the impact would be on short-term insurance, and then they also went on to give me their personal point of view and what they think the future trend would be. So, yeah, to summarize, what I need you to do is basically summarize the article. Say, say to me, this article is about blah de blah de blah de blah de blah my personal opinion on the matter is that I agree with the, with the writer because of these and these reasons or I disagree with the writer because of these and these reasons. And then tell me what you think the effect would be on short-term insurance and tell me what you think the effect would be on your career path. And I really want you to go wild and think outside the box and tell me about all sorts of things and not just on every single article tell me that the premiums are going to go up and all the short-term insurance companies are going to suffer losses and they're going to retrench all of their staff because premiums have just been going up in the last 10 years and I've not seen a lot of insurance companies retrench a whole lot of staff. In fact, I just see them employing more and more staff and getting bigger buildings because obviously we work in a very profitable industry. Um, so I really want you to think out of the box. And if you work with niche insurance, by all means, um, relate all of these articles, the disasters, the innovations to that which it is that you work with, whether it be cybercrime, or aviation, or marine, or I had a client the other day that actually insures embryos that are being sent to other countries. Um, I don't know how many media articles you're going to get on that, but um, whatever you can get, by all means, I don't need you to only focus on burglaries in a personal lines policy, or the fires in Cape Town. Um, you have carte blanche to do whatever it is that you want to do as long as you cover the five topics let's quickly go back to them as long as you cover these five topics for me as long as you have 15 articles in total and you can discuss three articles per topic which gives you 15 or two per topic and any other five or one per topic and any other ten on phase or treating customers fairly or poppy or the recent updates in terms of class of business training um, anything else that is applicable I once had a client that was um, discussing the South African breweries and the drought and um, what a pity it is that beer might well, soon and become not available so um, I love it really I do whatever it is that you want to report on by all means um, be my guest and do whatever it is that um, floats your boat um, gosh I think that is everything so you're going to complete your full qualification your full portfolio right with your media research assignment put in the articles put in your analysis Put in your workplace evidence and your ID and matric certificate and everything. Send that to me. I'm going to send you the mock exam. I'm going to give you more or less two weeks to complete it depending on when my assessor is here and when we need to upload your qualification onto INCITA and when INCITA is here. I'm going to take all of those things into consideration for you. Um, we're going to assess and send that mock exam back to you. If you want some material on specific aspects of the qualification, do not hesitate to ask me. I will send that through to you. Um, but of all of the clients that I've RPL'd, maybe 2% of clients ask me for information. You will see on that mock exam, it is not difficult. I really try and assess the qualification as practically as possible. 
also still ensuring that I assess all of the unit standard outcomes, CCFOs, ELOs, associated assessment criteria, and all of those beautiful things. I also ensure that your evidence is valid and authentic and current and sufficient. And if it's not, I'm, go I'm going to ask you for more. Um, we're going to assess it. We're going to send it back to you. You can see exactly where you made your errors. And then you can write that final summative assessment. And once you've write, written that final summative assessment, your process is done. Please just take into consideration that we must assess it. We need to moderate it. We need to prepare your file then for external in situ verification. Which, and as I said, they only come here about four to five times a year. Once they've been here, we upload all of your credits onto in -cita. And then INCITA needs about three months in order to Q&A those credits, which usually only happens after 21 days after date of verification, after the head of the ETQA has signed it off. Um, and they only print certificates four times a year. So please, we will keep you up to date and we will show you everything that is done and what has been done. We will send you emails to say, okay, it's been verified, yes, your license to skill statement of credits once in CETA has approved our uploads we will send you the in CETA statement of results and once we receive the certificate we will let you know that we've received it we will scan and email a copy to you and you will then be able to courier um, get a, a courier to come and collect the original or we will post the original to you but please bear in mind all of this takes time and um, the certificates don't look for them within the first six months after in CETA verification. Um, yeah, best of luck. Please, if there's anything, let me know. I'm not always available on my cell phone because sometimes I'm shooting training videos um, or um, in meetings or in training or with clients or I'm just walking on the beach. Um, the easiest way to get hold of me is just send me a WhatsApp or send me a voice note on WhatsApp or SMS. Because apart from the fact that my phone is literally glued to me, I um, obviously do now and again check my phone to see if any cute men sent me messages. And, um, and then I'll see that you sent me a message and I'll be able to reply to you. And if you send me a voice note, it's easy because when I'm driving or in between training and breaks, I'll just be able to reply to you. Um, I hope that I've covered everything and that I've answered all of your questions and um, best of luck in completing this process and, and thank you so much once again for choosing License to Skill and trusting me with the process of giving you this full qualification. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you because I am a single mommy and all of the money that I make through my company, um, I obviously pay that and tax and all those things on it. But um, I use that in order to look after my boy, the most gorgeous and amazing boy in the universe, to educate and clothe and feed him. Um, I also try and help a lot of other people, like my brother from another mother, who's currently finishing his civil engineering studies through WITS. And, um, and I do a lot of free training for people and, um, and try and help as many people as I can because that's just the kind of person that I am. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for um, supporting a small business and for supporting me. And um, yeah, also it's just so important and, and so satisfying to me when I'm able to give you your full qualification, especially those of you that have struggled for years and years to complete this qualification, who has completed a lot of unit standards with many different providers. You might have even been under the impression that you did have a full qualification and then found out that you didn't. Um, it's because of you that I do this. And, um, and I also just on a very personal note want to share with you that um, I am very spiritual and um, I believe that everything happens the way that it should and that I have skills and gifts and I try and use that for the greatest good of all concerned and, um, and I believe that the universe sends me the people that I need to help and in return I thank the universe for every single person that supports me and I wrap you in light and in love and I pray to the universe to bless you abundantly. Uh, every single one of you. When you email me and tell me that you've been sick or that your daughter is sick and you haven't been able to submit the file, then I even pray for you for that too. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. Good luck with your portfolio. Um, 
congratulations on completing your full qualification and let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Thanks. Bye.